I'm Scott with Barbara Reynolds. My name is Mike. And we're cooking pigs today. First off, when you get your pig out, I'm going to set it out on the tail. And then you want to make a decision from here to here, all the way up, as far as you can get, all the way up to here. You want to get her cut open. So you want to take a knife, preferably a good sharp knife, and then you want to run right into it, just bring it through. And then you're going to have a little bit of a chest cavity in there. Tap it on through, and that's pretty much all you got to do. Then, Pull the rope and stretch open as far as you can. This is so that you can get access to the cavity on the backbone here so that we can run wires through once we get it set into our barbecue. You can also stuff these with chickens, vegetables, all kinds of stuff, seasoning. When you do that though, after you get it stitched down, add all your stuff in, you gotta stitch the belly back closed, which we won't be doing that today. So I unbolt the cage. Once you get your cage unbolted, you fold your arm to the outside. Belly up in the air. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go in. You just want to run your wire right in between your ribs, right on the back side of the the spine. And you run it, run it down through. Just kind of poke it. It takes it takes a little bit of work. Once you get it through, you pull her down. And then you got to do the other side of it, which is wrap it around the spine with our wire. And we're just going to run it through, just like we did the other side. Sometimes your wire is not sharp enough to poke through the skin, so we're going to use a knife to actually put a hole right where we fill the wire at. And then, just pull it down tight, as tight as you can. Twist it, and then it tight. Then you'll take the needle nose and just give it a twist. And that ensures your tightness. And then you just tuck the wires out of the way. Or you can cut them shorter. That way it doesn't catch anything if your hand's in the way or something doesn't catch your hand. Okay, we need one, two, three, four in the middle on the back of the spine here. Then you want to come up to the front here. Then you want to do at least two more right up in here. So we'll just once again just poke it through and then you're good to go on the spine. So we're going to want to work on tying the legs. So you're just going to run your wire through, wrap it around the leg, and then you want to tie it to the cage, just like that. And the same with goes for the back side. Tie the back side to the cage as well, both sides as well. You also want to cover the head of your pig with aluminum foil. To hold on my foil, to keep my foil on there, so I'll take a wire and I'll run it around the head of the pig. It will tie it to the cage here, and then tie it to the cage over on the opposite side. Then, for extra added security, I push these cages down. I tighten the bolts with the press and wrench on all four sides. And then I will tie wire around the cage. This will hold the cage closed so you don't lose your pig in the fire pit. And that includes the wire to the pig. Start off with the Kingsford charcoal. It's 
kind of a fast light yield, so an easy start. Drop the lighter fluid with that to get it going. We want to build a plow out here. Show the plow out here. I like both sides. Even though we, have, we don't have direct heat here, you have to pick straight in because the heat is going to start cooking the pig. Uh, and then what I do is I'll take some of our mesquite, put it on top of our, our files here, that way we can kind of get that flavor going already. And then I'll take and I'll lay some out here because what we're going to do, once we get good hot coals, we'll start scooping it into the center. Most of your heat over here, most of your heat over here, in the center you want to have less heat. Because the middle of it is obviously a lot smaller, so keep the, the heat off of that as much as possible. These are your heat shields. They help keep your heat in. Uh, I am stabbing it because the skin is actually really hard before you get it cooked. So now we can actually, since we stab a hole, we can run it in there and inject the pig. Real butter is the same thing they use on Thanksgiving. Uh, it comes with the injector and the marinade. It is very good, very delicious stuff. They're cooking, some areas might get hot, so you need to be able to pull the, the heat away from them. And sometimes you just pick a bottle and just reduce the heat just a little bit. There, that's perfect. Voila! Typically like this, you want to hurry up and heat that as fast as possible. The cooking of the pig, the time varies uh, on the size of the pig. This here is a 75 pound pig. Usually it's about an hour for 10 pounds, but then you mostly want to be checking it with a, a meat thermometer that you can plug into it. Most thermometers will have a pork. A pork marking on it that will actually tell you the temperature that the pig is supposed to be at. We've had so much fun today, you just wait for the chocolate fountain video. That's where we all cover ourselves in chocolate! <laughs>